Buenas, buenas. Welcome to Music Marketing TV. I am Kevin Ochoa, and today we're going to be looking at a two-part series on how to use Growspeed. In this first episode, we're going to see how Growspeed works, how the time, volume, and the envelope section work inside the playlist and for your live performances. So without further ado, let's get started. I want you guys to listen to this little section I prepared. This first half is prepared, and the second part is completely random. Let's just take a listen. So as you guys can hear, you get some pretty interesting results, even if we're doing things at random with growth speed. So that means that you don't have to get as surgical as I did in this section to get something that sounds just nice. All right, let's learn how growth speed works. So right here, I have a drum loop. And we have over here the time section, volume section, and the envelope. So both time and volume have a mix knob. So let's take a listen. It's just uh, zero to 100%. So if you guys want to mix that in, you guys can go ahead and do so. We have a hold button, and that lets us hold on to a pattern for multiple measures. And we have a scratch pad. Of course, you can actually link this to your controller. So let's over the generic link. And as you guys can see, it's mapped to there. So if you guys want to do some pretty crazy performance stuff, you actually can. And down here we have 36 different sequences that we can actually use. And they begin on C2 inside the keyboard and go all the way up to, for the volume, they goes all the way up to B4. For time, it goes, it starts at C5 and ends at B7. So it's actually pretty clear how to use it. All you have to do is start selecting different keys. Also, the black keys are selected. And we get 72 different um, little patterns that we can use. At the bottom, we have a volume. We have a, to show the envelope settings or not. And then we have attack, release, and tension, which all controls the nodes and how the time affects all these, all these nodes. Down here, we have the attack, release, and tension which controls the nodes and how how the audio reacts to these nodes. So if there's clicking going on, you can change the attack, release, also tension to see how that works. There's also click reduction over here, and that's also very helpful. And I'll show you how to actually fix some stuff with this in the next video. But right now, I just want to focus on these sections. On the left-hand side, we have the envelopes. And I'm going to start off with the volume first because it's the easiest one to explain. We have the four beats, and we have volume, 100%, and at the bottom we have volume at zero. So we wanted to remove the second beat. It's very simple, Not, there's nothing much to it. There's also various modes to work in. For example, if we want to use snap to grid, we can snap to 16ths, 12ths, 8ths, 6ths, 4ths, and 3rds. However, if we don't want any, we can also select that and we will not map to anything or snap to anything. However, I like to keep it at one eighth. It's easiest to use. But if I want to get really surgical, I'll go into this one and actually remove clicks and stuff like that. We have the step editing mode. So that means that if I press right click, I mean left click, we can actually draw in things really quickly. If I right hold and swipe, We'll delete stuff. So once again, left click and hold to draw, or just left click to put in a node, and right click to remove things. We have freeze. We have the freeze option, which lets you freeze things. So that means if I click anywhere, it won't move uh, any of the nodes, which is good for a performance in case you bump something and move a node or whatever. You don't want that to happen when you're performing live. 
we also have the envelope, the time, and volume. Over here we have hold, which controls which pattern we want to hold, the last one or the next one we're selecting. We have trigger sync, which lets us know when we're in a sync, and position sync, which lets us know where we're going to sync. So if we want to sync within one beat, it'll let us sync within one beat or within four beats. Now let's check out the time section. So the time section is actually a little bit different. Instead of being 100% in, and my, in zero, we actually have different variables. The first zero is this one. If we have anything above this, it's in on real time without being buffered. And the numbers over here represent the beats that's going to skip and stretch. So like by that, I mean that it's going to skip the last beat, but it's going to uh, stretch these other three beats to equal the length of these four beats. So listen. So it skipped the last beat and stretch it out. Now, if I go down to the two, it's gonna be divided in two because it just skipped the last four beats. If I go to three, it's gonna skip the last three beats and only stretch out the first one. If I go to four, we actually get silence because it's skipping all four beats. If I go further down, we'll actually start getting some reverse stuff. So in the first one, we'll reverse just the first, actually the last segment will be reversed. If we go to half, we'll reverse only the back half. And again, these, after we get past this line over here, we're no longer in real time. We have to wait one measure for it to take effect. And then over here we have three, so it's gonna take and reverse these three. And we go all the way to the bottom, we'll reverse the whole section. It's quite simple. If we do the opposite, we'll actually start speeding things up. As we can hear, it's really simple to work with gross beat. Now, what I want to show you is how to automate things properly with gross beat. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna activate these slots again. Now, if we see right here, I have automated from one section all the way to the end of the section that I want to affect. That is because if I change this thing a little, it will actually change in the next section that's triggered by gross beat. So you guys better understand what I mean. Let's actually get to automating. So let's say I want to add complex seven to the third measure. I'll click complex seven, right click it, select copy value. I'll select this value, uh, select paste value, and I'll do the same to the end of the affected area. Paste. Now what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to select this one, copy value, and paste it. So that I can still have whatever section, whatever sequence I'm trying to trigger over here be clean. And then now this next section will be clean itself too. Now this one, I'm going to select copy value and paste value. It's very simple, very easy to do. And it's, it works the same for the volume. You just right click, select copy value, and just paste it. Very simple and to the point. And I'm gonna select this, copy value, whoa, and paste value, and it should be the same. Very cool. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you guys next time.